Do you know Simon Sinek? I believe you do, because you have clicked on the video. Have you ever dreamt about being as comfortable, as genuine, as authentic and as confident as he is when he is speaking? Well, if you didn't, I did, definitely. And that's the reason why I have started analyzing his speech. The way he responds, the way he acts, the way he is in interviews. Because I love that. Man, I really love that. And I wanted to, and I still want to, become as good speaker as he is. I know I, there is a long journey ahead of me to become as good as he is. But for me, the analysis is the first part. And then I'll be implementing some of the tips that I have learned from the analysis. So please feel inspired, don't feel bad because I am not as good as he is as well. I am not doing it because I learned all things, I'm just learning that so I bring awareness, my awareness and some of yours as well, to parts, to speech to body language clues and uh, sort of things that I have noticed in his speech. And I'm diving in right now. I'll be talking about two videos from one interview because there is so many things that we can pinpoint and we can adapt and we can learn and we just can sort of work on that. So before we start watching the videos, there is the first thing that we can notice, the difference between two of them. The interviewer is sitting in a, well, sort of strange position. Like he is, he seems to want to be confident and dominant and comfortable. But when you look at him, it doesn't feel comfortable when you are looking at that. It doesn't feel that he's authentic. It doesn't feel that it's like, yeah, it's, it is it. I want to be like that. It feels like, yeah, all right. He's the person. But when you look at Simon Sinek, he leans back, even though that when you are in a camera trainings, they recommend you not to do it because the camera takes what is first. But he sits in a comfortable position, not in a confident one, not in a dominant one, but in a comfortable position. That is probably a very important part. Well, he is doing that and yet, he manages to be very confident and being perceived, well, I really love the way he speaks, so he's godlike for me. Even the raised shoulders a little bit, the chair is doing it for him, but he doesn't mind having, having, raised, having raised shoulders, even though it is a submissive position. It is something that I'd never recommend you to do to be a better speaker, and yet, well, it works for him. Well, let's start with the first clip. People say we incentivize performance. You, you can't incentivize results. Like, you can't do that. You can only incentivize the behavior that will achieve a certain result. Um, and if it's only about the short term, then guess what? You're going to drive a behavior that drives short term. And so... He is in that position, in that, that I wouldn't say you to do that. And he is changing and gesturing. He's having open gestures and he doesn't mind doing big gestures with his hands. And that is a confident trait. Because when you are not afraid of gesturing, when you are not afraid of taking more space, you are being considered as a confident one. Because only confident and dominant because only confident and dominant people can be bigger, can uh, like allow themselves to take more space and he is doing a great job at that. He is on a quite a small small space but when he starts talking he changes the position a little bit and he is gesturing openly and even though he's he even he, he is even extending the arms which is usually not the case. Usually people are not doing that. They are usually gesturing in within their they are usually gesturing within their range of like comfortable zone to gesture. In your case, what are the behaviors that you're recognizing and rewarding? And so if people are getting bonused only for hitting numbers and they're not getting bonused for how they do business, then you're going to incentivize a certain behavior. So I'll give you an example. Um, so young in my career, I worked at an ad agency and I was the junior dog's buddy to the junior dog's buddy. 
and um, it was traditional for a big new business pitch that the senior folks... Genuineness of his speech is something that is really inspiring because the way he is speaking, it seems that he hasn't prepared the speech. Well, he is speaking like this in every speech and I doubt that he hasn't prepared that. And that aspect of genuinity that he's looking around, he's looking down a lot. And he's looking not at the person, not at the not, not to the camera. And yet he you know that he's speaking to you. You know that he's speaking to the person he is there with. His breaking eye contact and breaking everything and not looking at that person a lot. And that pattern speech, that the dynamic, he says something. He says something, then he's, he pauses for a while, then he says something, he's speaking and he pauses for a while. He doesn't mind to pause and that is something that apparently is so hard to do. I find myself struggling a lot to pause when I'm speaking, to slow down and to think and to allow myself to think and to allow myself to allow you to see that I am thinking about something, that I am not 100% prepared, even though I have written the, I have written the analysis, I am trying to pick that up as I am observing that, so it seems more genuine. I am 100% genuine with you right now, so I hope you appreciate that too, and not going to doesn't matter. Um, well, it happened to be around Christmas time, and all the senior folks went on vacation. And so me and one other junior person who were left behind because we didn't go on vacation were told to prepare the war room, which basically means take a conference room and fill it up with all the research. Well, that took a few hours, right? But we still had a week. And so she and I decided to write the whole pitch. We went through all the research, and we came up with a strategy, and we wrote the pitch. All the senior leaders came back. We presented our work, and they actually used our strategy in this new business pitch. When he's getting to something that is emotional for him and important for him and he wants to emphasize that, then again, not only that he's really extending the arms and not being afraid to really take a lot of space around him, he also is moving a lot with his head. He's emphasizing and punctuating words and faces and parts of his speech that he finds important and interesting probably and he enjoys talking about them. I've been told not to move that much with my head, but apparently even Simon Sinek is doing it on some parts. So I will have to sort of rethink and model my behavior more into Simon Sinek part. So emphasizing, showing that you really care about the stuff that you are talking about. That's what is punctuating and expressing emotions about. If you don't care about it, you can, you can sit like this, not to change words at all, and speak about the thing that you are about to speak. Well, now I want to, stop, now I want to talk to you about how I want to be like Simon Sinek at speaking. Or now I want to talk about how to be like Simon Sinek when you are presenting, when you are talking to camera, when you are talking to something. And I need to do that as well and try to incorporate that big gesturing because I've never done that. And we lost the pitch. We didn't win. And I got a huge promotion. <laughs> My boss actually moved me up two levels. You can see as he is back in the chair, he just leans back and he gestures and he's doing all the he's doing all the powerful stuff. When there is something really important. He leans forward a lot and again that creates feeling like where there is something important going on, he's getting closer to me, I need to pay attention. So that is it. Work with your body as he is, like move, or move along and what is interesting and important that he is not getting into baseline of a confident dominant position by books, but he's getting back to comfortable position to really feel comfortable about the position he is at. And that is something that struck me the most probably. That even though that you don't need to have the textbook dominant position to really be confident, to really be dominant, that it really comes from something else. I mean, 
transcendently, it's of, I mean, metaphysically, it's from the heart and from the will, but generally it's communicated by the body language. So we just have to adapt that and learn that body language as he is having. If you are with me on that, definitely bear, definitely bear along. If you like that video so far, please like it, please share it. It will be an honor for me to spread it to even more people who wants to model Simon Sinek like we are. Well, we are diving into another video because I think we talked about everything we wanted in this video. Have you seen um, companies transform because they have figured this out, what, what the why really is and how to communicate it in such a way that it becomes quite powerful? Uh, the simple answer is of course. Active listening. Something really important and interesting, especially for me, I've been talking about active listening a lot in all, basically all basically all analysis that I've done in the past. And he is a so confident person, he is a leader, and yet he is having that active listening. He is quiet and listening to the person to that to that interviewer when he is saying something. What struck me is an interest what struck me is that he's not nodding. He's really listening. He is paying attention to him, he's looking at him, and yet he is not he and yet he is not nodding. Like I thought of a theory that you are nodding when you are more on a note of understanding the person. Like, yeah, I get it, you, get, you have it hard, you have, it, you have a difficult time, I understand, I'm there with you. But when you are listening to... But when you are listening to... But when you are listening to solve the problem, you tend to activate more of a mental capacity. So you react less, so you have more capacity on the inside. And I think this is what's going on, because he is listening to solve the thing, to understand the question and to sort of give a good answer that he is not on a mode of, of understanding, but mode of solving. And that could be interesting, implying in interpersonal relationships, that when you are going to listen to someone, observe yourself, that when you are listening your boss, so you understand the... the the task that you are getting, do you not or don't you not? And when you are listening to your friend explaining how hard she or he is having, I don't know, some situation, are you nodding or are you not? I've realized that I am nodding way more when I'm about to understand that, when I'm about to give understanding and sympathies. And I'm nodding less and in a different way when I'm about to solve the problem. So understanding is more like, yeah, 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 you got it, difficult, I understand. And when you are getting an, a task, yeah, yeah. It's more choppy, more, it's more choppy, it's more sharp movement and less repetitive. That's what I thought, just something interesting. Let me know down in the comments what do you think about that. Um you know, companies that were uh, maybe just financially driven, shareholder, that's all it was, money, 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 no purpose, no cause underlying. People liked the job, you know, everything was fine, nobody loved it, you know? Did they, they didn't necessarily trust leadership, even though they may get along with them. Um, and when, 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 a, when the cause becomes... Repeating words, something controversial as well, I am cutting out words that I'm repeating when I'm recording a video because I've been told to do it. And here you see Simon Sinek repeating one word four times. Like he says, when four times. It was like, what? It's possible? And it doesn't look bad. It actually looks that he is thinking more about that thing. That he is really looking, looking after a he's really searching for a good word for that situation and it's like wow probably genuine expression genuine speech is maybe better than the artificially 
than the artificially polished one. So I'm going to try it in this one. Please let me know what do you feel from me in this video. Please feel free to criticize me a little bit on how, how does it look like. And if you want to share something else, please share what do you like is what are you going to apply in your life? What are you going to implement in your speaking trainings? And if you will, if you want, definitely share a video of yourself doing it. Well, we are sharing that here, so feel free to do it as well. Uh, clearly articulated and visceral. It's visceral for the leaders as well. And so you asked me sort of, what of what's the right way to communicate it? The, the interesting is, is, you know, what's the right, right way to talk about your kids? What's the right way to talk about your marriage? I'm like, well, if it's a successful marriage and you love your kids, you ooze with passion. You know, when somebody starts talking about their marriage and it's not doing so well, like, we can tell. <laughs> like, we can tell when the yeah. passion's not there. Um, and it's the, it's the same for work, which is if, if you truly have a... I really love the way he is playing with the tonality of the voice and the playing of the cadence and fluidity of his speech. And when he's talking about the marriage and that you will know that when... The marriage is not good according to how the person speaks about the marriage. Well, I love that. The changing of the emotions and changing the pacing and like getting, giving the emotion to the person is beautiful. The beautiful manipulation with emotions. I think you really need to learn that. I don't think I can do it, but well, this is something that I want to learn as well. So not speaking always the same, in always the same tonality. Change the voice a little bit, change the cadence a little bit, so it is interesting for the person, so you are activating reticular activation, syst reticular activation system of the person, so it's, oh, whoa, there is something going on, there is some change, some difference in, this, in his voice. Well, let's work on that together. And again, smile. He's not smiling all the time. So the moments where he actually smiles are so precious and so nice that you know there is something good and you are happy about it, even though you don't know why is that. Love. If the leadership truly has a, a, a belief in the mission that you're trying to advance, I don't need to give you an instruction manual on how to talk about it. It'll pour out of you. In fact, quite the opposite. We'll have to like get you to stop. Right? Um, uh, I think the one thing that I, a lot of leaders miss the opportunity or they take for granted is, is meetings, quite frankly, which is when we start a meeting, um, let's say it's, it's reviewing about the budget, right? So everybody comes in and be like, all right, let's pull out the budget and pull out a, you know, Excel. Two things. It's really nice looking at him and feeling that he's really genuine that he's not fake because he's in, a, in an interview and he is not a fake because there is a camera. I feel that I have a, like real, pro, real problems when there are cameras around me, especially when I'm talking to camera in Czech language. Like, I am used to speak to camera in English, but not in Czech language, and I really need to work on that even more than on in, in English. But I still feel and I think that when there is a camera, I speak a little bit differently than I am speaking without the camera, when the cameras are off. And he seems to not to care that there are other people, that there are watching him millions of people on, online, and there is a camera, nothing matters. He seems to be perfectly genuine and the way he is when the cameras are off. And it's beautiful. I think it's a skill that I haven't decoded how to do it. I just think that you really need to speak for a long time on the camera. And another thing is there are so many there are so many figures of his that you are not getting used to him and you still enjoying watching him. When a person is boring speaker, he speaks in a boring way and has like three turns, three figures, three moves or five moves or something that you basically pick it up in like 10 minutes of his speech and there is nothing, nothing surprising after that. But he has like 50 figures, 50, 50 turns and it really is interesting to watch that. He's changing them, he's changing them so it is, I mean really, 
awesome to listen to that because it's never boring, it's never dull. He speaks slow and then he speaks up, he is not giving you any emotions and then he starts emotions, he is sometimes leaning forward, he's not something, he's sometimes big, he's sometimes small. It's really beautiful to watch that and the depth and the capacity of his is enormous. To achieve our goal, if we don't do well financially, then we will, then right there, we're not going to find a cure for cancer. We will not be able to contribute at all. So the reason we're having this budget meeting is to make sure that everything's on track and to make sure that we're, we're that this is advancing that. Because when we leave that context out, it all becomes about this, and that's when we get that myopia. That's when we, then we st that get that finite mindset where we, can, we can't see past the numbers. So it's up to the leaders to the point where others make fun of them. So mark this, this is a practical tip. We yeah. have 400 leaders listening, yeah. and let's say there are five meetings a day, 200 d days a year, that's a, uh, a thousand times yeah. 400, 400,000 opportunities in the next 12 months. To, to reinforce, Yeah. to reinforce. And I mean, I mean, I'm obsessive about it, like the PowerPoint. Probably the last point of today, again, active listening, and this is why I came up with a theory that I shared previously in that active listening part. Now he is more only on understanding. The interviewer, the interviewer is only summarizing what they have agreed on or what they, like, what they have agreed on. And in this case, Simon Sinek is like nodding more, way more. He is not having his his stoic active listening skill, but more of an active active listening skill. He's nodding more, he's reacting to what the person is saying because he is not asked to solve something afterwards and he is not asked to solve a problem afterwards. He is only there at this moment to kind of agree on that. Yeah, yeah, I support that, you said it properly, I understand that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's it. So when you want to understand something, not more, smile, of course, he's smiling a lot, smile is beautiful, smile is amazing. And if you are about to get a task, understand more on the task than on emotional understanding of the situation, which is expressed by that repetitive movement of nodding, yeah, 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 yeah. totally. The one page of your PowerPoint presentation that gets more, uh, that gets a longer uh, read than any other page is the cover page. Because it's up on the screen while we're waiting for the meeting to start, everybody just... I also laugh like there are almost no stress signs, there are almost no signs that he is uncomfortable at all. It almost makes me believe that he really is comfortable at the situation he is at. <laughs> And it makes me jealous because it makes me jealous because I am still a little bit nervous in front of camera, in front of people. But yeah, I guess when I will be doing this for 15 years like he is, it will get better. Or I don't know, 10 years, whatever is it, but long time. But for a long time. Well, that's it. Let me know if you have liked the video, if you have find it interesting, important for you. If you like that, please like the video, please share the video so it spreads to more people. And that's it for me. I will see you in the next video. And before the next video comes out, here is a video about Simon Baker, the same name guy, also very, very charming in a little bit different way. So you can just check that out. So you kind of expand your context of how charismatic people can look like. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time, guys. Love you. Bye.